Hey everyone, my name is Scott, better known as Nerevo, and I create aircraft illustrations. Well, more specifically, aircraft templates, and if you go over to my website, norebo.com, you will see every single aircraft template that I've ever done. There's about 130 of them so far, so uh, definitely do that uh, if you want to follow along. I, this is going to be quite quick, actually. It's a 10-minute time lapse roughly, of how I created this Air New Zealand livery on top of my Boeing 777. <laughs> I was going to say 777, but people annihilate me for that. It's a Boeing 777 template, Boeing 777-300 template. And uh, anyway, go grab it, come back, and uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I do whenever I start a new illustration is that I go over to airliners.net and I try to pull in as many side view reference photos as I can, and I place them right on the drawing so I have easy access to them, and I, I can reference them as I'm doing the actual livery illustration. So I got my photos, and I'm just going to get in there and start. And as you can see there, I'm cheating a little bit. <laughs> that, uh, that, that other illustration that you just saw was one that I did previously where I had already created the logo and now I just imported it into this one. Uh, if you want the Air New Zealand logo, just go do a Google search. You're going to find all kinds of logos uh, for free out there on the internet, uh, vector, PNG, whatever. Uh, you'll find exactly what you need. But I already had it, so it was easy for me just to import into here. Uh, I did have to extend it a little bit to fit the size of the uh, 777 vertical stabilizer. So uh, not too difficult, but uh, yeah. So this is actually one of my favorite liveries, and um, it's there's really not much to say about it other than the fact that I wish we could see it more here in the U.S., but <laughs> it is what it is. So again, I'm just importing the titles from the other illustration that I had, and now I'm just trying to get it placed onto my 777 template. Uh, it's a very simple font and you probably if, if you can't find exactly what you're looking for on Google uh, it's you know, it wouldn't be all that difficult to trace in Adobe Illustrator or any other vector illustration program now what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the windows and I'm just trying to match the pattern that is on the Air New Zealand 777 I'm just kind of blocking out um, what I, I think what I did here is I, I duplicated the windows, I made them white, and I placed them over top of the other windows, and now I'm just deleting the, the, the overlay masks to reveal the window pattern underneath. So now this is my favorite part, the fern underneath there. And again, that was an element that I drew a long time ago, and it's... That was actually difficult to draw. I, I tried to find it on Google. I couldn't find uh, an exact representation of it. So I actually had to roll up my sleeves and draw that one a couple of years ago. But I'm glad I did. So now whenever I create uh, an Air New Zealand livery illustration like this, I have it and I'm, I'm good to go. So now I'm just trying to get it properly sized. It's, uh, it's just all eyeballing it. I, I'm not doing any math here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not tracing anything. I'm just trying to get it positioned roughly where it needs to be. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, again, I, if you get out a ruler and you tried to measure my illustration compared to the actual livery, you might find some discrepancies, but you know, close enough is good enough for me. So let's see, what am I doing next? Looks like I'm just trying to get organized here. And um, Oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm going to copy and paste this into Illustrator so I can draw that black section. So what I did is I just did a screenshot from Photoshop so I had that template uh, that I could bring directly into Photoshop, or sorry, Illustrator, and draw that rear shape. You could definitely do this in Photoshop, but... I have much more control in Illustrator, I feel. I personally like Illustrator a lot for this type of drawing, and it doesn't bother me at all to switch back and forth between the two programs, uh, Illustrator and Photoshop. They work really well together, as they should. You know, they're made by the same company, so just copying and pasting things between the two different programs is, is super easy. So, yeah, it's just a matter of going back and forth, uh, adjusting the shape bringing it into Photoshop, 
positioning it. And if it's not right, then I'll go back to Illustrator, make some adjustments, and then copy and paste it back into Photoshop. Here I am back in Illustrator again. Uh, I'm just trying to get it right. It's all eyeballing it. And then once I get it, I use that as a mask, essentially. And I trace the edges of the fuselage, and then I just trim out the rest. And then that leaves me with the black shape on that back half of the fuselage. So, yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. <laughs> again, you know, as I going back and watching these illustrations again after the fact, after I've already done these illustrations, I, I catch things that I didn't catch before. And I saw myself noticing a few little things that I should have looked at, but I didn't. Uh, I'm not even going to mention them here, but um, whatever. It's, uh, it, it's, it's all good. Like I said, my illustrations aren't 100% perfect, but I just try to get them as accurate as possible. Now I'm adding a little bit of gloss to the engine. Again, it may not be 100% realistic in real life because those engines don't necessarily have glossy paint. If you look at any Air New Zealand aircraft illustrations, you don't really see a lot of gloss. Uh, aircraft paint isn't very glossy to begin with. It's more of a satin finish. In my experience, I mean that's that's ten that, that's usually what I've seen. Unless they're I don't know maybe they start out glossy and then they just quickly quickly fade to a satin finish or something. I don't know. I know nothing about paint. <laughs> that's why I don't paint aircrafts. So again, it's uh, the advantage of doing a lot of illustrations in the past means that I can just copy and paste elements over from those illustrations into this one. And as you can see, I brought over the uh, the numbers or the the nose cone number uh, from the past illustration dropped in, into this one and uh, now I'm just going to adjust the size a little bit and uh, yeah, copying the registration there and which is nice because I don't have to search for a font I already knew what font that was I believe this was Helvetica to begin with so I mean it was a simple font that I already had so that it's definitely a plus when I have the font that the airlines use and uh, I, I hate it when I can't find the fonts. <laughs> it's just it's just a, a major inconvenience. So now what it looks like I'm doing is I'm I'm cheating a little bit on this one. I'm taking the gloss or the the hard reflection from a past illustration and dropping it directly onto this one. And uh, if you want to see how I do that, actually, I'm going to show you right here. I didn't realize that I did. But I just draw the shape of the reflection here in Illustrator. I copy and paste it here into Photoshop and just kind of get it placed like so. I'm not trying to be totally perfect, but, you know, good enough is close enough. And now I just apply a downward gradient to it. And I'm going to fade it out completely so you don't see a whole lot of it. Yeah, there you go. Just, it just needs a little bit. And you can see it looks very realistic. And then what I do next is I add a white gradient on top, fading from that hard edge to the top of the fuselage. And uh, yeah, it looks completely realistic. The downside is that on white aircraft like this, you don't really get the effects of that gloss very much. And I love making glossy illustrations. To me, that just sets it off. It just it's it just adds that bling that I <laughs> that I really like. And uh, you don't really see it on on aircraft with that are that are primarily white, unfortunately. And now I'm adding a little bit of gloss to the vertical stabilizer. And you can't even really see it there. And it looks like this one is just about done, um, except for the, the wing box. I'm going to go back in and make some changes there. Oh, I'm just extending that black livery out in the wing box, which is easy to do with my template because you can just completely eliminate elements. Here I eliminated the wing, or I, I hid the layers, uh, the engine, the landing gear, etc., so I could just get in there and, and focus on extending that that part of the livery. And that looks like it's pretty much done. I can't see anything else that I need to do. So yep, now I'm just going to duplicate it. And uh, I'm going to remove the landing gear layer or hide that layer on the top version just so I can get my typical Norebo side by side comparison. And there you have it. Real simple. Again, I know I cheated on this one quite a bit by stealing 
elements from previous illustrations, but I do have some aircraft illustration demos coming up where I create everything from scratch, including the logos, the titles, everything. So do stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, a reminder, if you want 50% off my entire line of aircraft templates, your entire order, your entire first order, do be sure to check the link in the description below, sign up for my mailing list, and you're going to get 50% off. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.